Hi there. I'm gonna talk about our first single called Wake Up Clean. We released Wake Up Clean in late 2015. Uh, I'm not entirely sure of the date, but I think it was around like early August, something like that. I don't remember a whole lot about writing this song. It was a while ago, um, but I, I think its meaning is pretty straightforward. <laughs> I was just irritated with the fact that it took me like a long time to get over girls that I had feelings for. Um, I just wanted to like wake up the next morning and have all of those feelings be gone. There's a lot of blame going on in this song. Um, I think I believed that the reason that I had a hard time getting over these girls was somehow their fault. Um, I thought they were manipulative and callous and didn't really care about how upset I was. Um, I guess I love to play the blame game or something. I, I'd like to think that I've become a little bit more responsible for my own feelings since then. But uh, anyways, I figured that was like, you know, a state of mind that we could all relate to. Just a quick, just a quick thing, uh, I'd like to note that most of my songs aren't necessarily about specific people in my life. Uh, the feelings and situations that I come up with are maybe inspired by like certain events or a combination of events, but they're almost never strictly autobiographical. I, I prefer to make sort of like wide sweeping statements that, so that people can sort of you know, attach their own life to it and not just hear about my life directly. That's what these vlogs are for, is <laughs> for, uh, you know, talking about me. We saved, um, we saved the money for this recording session by performing on the streets of Pasadena and asking for money. Um, that's called busking, for those of you who don't know, I'm probably going to refer to that a lot in these videos because we, we do that a lot and it's, uh, it's one of my favorite ways to perform and you know, it's been really successful for us overall. Um, I'll probably do a whole video about busking, or about my whole history on that later. And we also begged on the internet, you know, on Facebook, so you might remember that. <clears throat> this single kind of represented a fresh start for Will and the Won'ts. We had just come out of a weird, like, management deal, and we were adjusting to the loss of a few bandmates in the previous year. So we were just kind of, like, figuring ourselves out again, and we wanted a clean slate. The very last interaction we had with that manager that I mentioned earlier was that he introduced us to Luther Russell and Jason Hiller. Um, they turned out to be incredibly nice people and really talented musicians and producers. So uh, we really felt like they were the right fit for us at the time because we were uh, fascinated with analog recording. Uh, we wanted to record 100% live. We you know, figured that that was more authentic and a couple other of you might remember that uh, I sent this whole long uh, email and diatribe about uh, why I believe that to be the case. Um, it might be a little pretentious, but uh, you know, that's how it goes, especially uh, back then. I think we were a lot more pretentious than we are now. Anyway, Luther and Jason were, were experts at doing this, and uh, they were really going ho about it, so I was, you know, kind of shocked, because most producers aren't. We recorded the whole thing at Electrosound Studios um, in Beverly Hills. It's a great little analog studio, and we did it to four-track tape. Um, we did three songs total. Uh, one was Wake Up Clean, one was Get Out, and then uh, we did a bonus track, Darkness at Dawn. We did everything in less than three takes. Um, I don't even know if we did a third take on every song, but it's possible that we did a third take on Get Out. This particular song we did uh, in like one and a half, we did half a take, and then we did a full take, and that, that's the one that you hear on the record. But anyway, yeah, uh, musicians should definitely check out Electrosound and Jason and uh, Luther. Uh, they're really great people and they're fun to work with. Luther also recommended that we release the song uh, on vinyl through Rainbow Records. And this is the, uh, this is the end product of that. They, uh, they did a really great job. Um, you know, I just slapped our logo on the front, lyrics on the back in like a uh, crossword puzzle fashion. Uh, getting vinyl printed is uh, kind of a long process, like you have to go through test copies and uh, it's just a little bit different than printing CDs, so any musicians um, who are looking into doing this, which you totally should, it's a, it's a really great little collector's item for your fans and for, you know, vinyl enthusiasts like myself. Um, but just be prepared for the fact that it's going to be a little different than ordering CDs. Luther recommended we did that, and I'm glad that we did. We did a lot of pre-production for this song as well as for Get Out. Um, I think we did two four-hour sessions, so eight hours total. 
Um, Pre-production in general can be really stressful because the parts that you kind of got used to playing uh, and that you wrote out and that you're kind of attached to are often just thrown to the wayside with no real concern for your feelings about them. You know, the, the idea is to do what's best for the song um, objectively and not just from your point of view. Um, this was a growing process for us. I think we were all a little bit frustrated before uh, we finished the pre-production and ended up in the studio. We're pretty happy with the final product, but uh, we were nervous through the pre-production sessions. And I think Andrew in particular was, uh, you know, he kind of took the brunt of that burden. Uh, drums are definitely the hardest instrument to translate onto a rec recording. And uh, when you record, drums just sort of work differently than when you play live. Um, so the drum parts have to be reworked the most in general. At least for us, that's been my experience. Like I said, going into the studio itself was pretty uh, actually great. It was really easy. Uh, we did the whole, all three songs in like four hours, including mixing. That's one of the benefits of four track tape is you kind of have to get it right going in. And all that pre-production allowed us to sort of you know, do everything in just a few takes and just really knock it out. So that was actually, you know, it kind of like, we were like stress, 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 stress during pre-production and we got in the studio and it was like, oh, okay, we're done now. You know, that's pretty cool. And uh, it was it was kind of a like weird, like feeling of relief and it was kind of a thrill to do things that way. I'll talk a little bit more about the specific production of Darkness at Dawn and Get Out when I do those songs next. So uh, let's talk about the negatives, um, I think it's important to address negatives, you know, it helps you grow and, uh, you know, it will help you people understand that I'm not, like, an entirely out-of-control egomaniac. As cool as live analog recording is, I mean, we did this single like that, we did our whole first album like that, um, it doesn't really give you, like, very much control over the way that your end product is gonna sound. Um, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. In this case, the song came out pretty lo-fi and it has like a pretty distinctive like garage rock sound. And uh, I think it gets a little too Led Zeppelin-y for my tastes, uh, especially with the, the arrangement that we came up with. But you know, it's not too bad, I think. I'm, like I said, I'm generally happy with it. The sound is cool uh, because of those aforementioned, aforementioned things, but uh, it's a little bit thin and harsh. Uh, due to like the minimalist recording setup, you know, you just don't have a whole uh, a whole lot of options when you're doing things these, this way. Um, I think we also played the song a little bit fast. Um, as for the song itself, it kind of suffers from the typical will and the won'ts wordiness, which you know was you know became even more of a problem because uh, of how fast we played it. Um, and the chorus isn't really like the strongest thing in the world. Uh, it's fairly memorable after a few listens, but it's not like one of those instant jump out choruses. Um, and without the benefits of being able to double the guitar and vocals, um, it was especially hard to make that chorus stand out. Um, but like I said, overall, I'm, I'm actually really proud of this song as far as the way it's written and arranged and recorded, and uh, it's really fun to play live. It's a good rocker, you know? I also did an acoustic version of this song, and I had my good friend Julia McCabe film it. Um, and her uh, friend Adam Cude, Cude or Cutie, I'm not sure how to pronounce it anyway. I'll, I'll throw a link to that video in the description. Um, Alright, I think that's enough about this song. Um, let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer. We'll see you next time for Get Out. So wake up clean